In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand So I best be on my way In the early morning rain Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Yesterday I showed you this gorgeous 1988 Parker Centennial Duofold, Parker's homage to its flagship pen of the 1920s and the celebration of their 100th anniversary in 1988. The Centennial was a huge success in its own right and continues to be produced to this day. This Centennial can be yours for a little over $1,000 and this one commemorates Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, happening this weekend, and is a mere 2600 a bargain at twice the price. If you are one of the people standing on the balcony at Buckingham Palace this weekend, you might be able to afford one or even two of these pens. But for many of us bottom feeders, we have to settle for the clones. The Today we're going to look at my fourth Jin Hao Centennial, a model which I dubbed the best Chinese pen of last year. All 200 of you watching this must have really been taking my recommendation to heart because this model has been flying off the virtual shelves and Jin Hao just keeps coming up with more and more finishes and interesting combinations of finishes. And the price keeps dropping too. Now they're selling for around $18 US. I figured I'd collected enough after getting this original in orange and then this blue cracked ice with black finials and then the blue cracked ice with matching finials. But then, bless their stinky little hearts, Jin Hao went out and made one in Galaxy. Well, you know me in Galaxy. So I snagged one immediately and here it is. It has an ivory section and finials, but I figured I could make myself a Franken pen from various parts and nibs. The Jin Hao 100 Centennial for 18 bucks, a fountain pen tinkerer's dream, right now. So I've already got three of the Jin Hao 100 Centennial fountain pen. Uh, the first one didn't thrill me that much, but I'm not thrilled by that big red orange kind of look. The second one was great. Uh, because I love this cracked ice, ice blue, uh, but I wasn't all that thrilled with the, the black finials and the black section. Uh, but then they came out with this one, and it has the blue crushed ice with the matching finials and section, which I think is great. And the other thing that's great about these Centennials, I really do think that they're the pen of the year out of China from last year, um, is that the nibs are so swappable. Here I have that uh, Kaigalu calligraphy nib in a kind of a flame pattern there in this one. So when I saw more patterns of the Centennial coming out, I thought, well, I don't really need another one, but uh, this one was so nice, I couldn't pass it up. And they're in such a great price. So I ordered it and it's here and it came quick. Again, right to my door. Don't have to worry about Canada Post. Let's open it up. The unboxing is always very simple. Just like Here's our cellophane wrapper. And there's the pen. What I liked about this the most is that finally there's a Jin Hao Centennial in the Galaxy Blue, which I love so much. Here's the Moon Man in Galaxy. And of course I have all kinds of pen BBS in this Galaxy Blue. And this one's very unique with its ivory finials and section. And this looks like it's one of the old style Jin Hao nibs. Should say 18K BS because there's nothing 18 karat gold about this at all. Interesting Jin Hao converter. The nib should just turn right out. There we go. So you can swap these nibs. You can pull them out of that collar. I can put that black section on this pen. You can put the black finial 
on the pen and I can put whatever nib that I want in this pen as well it feels like that nib is ready to come out anyway yep or leave that nib in there because it might write fine it might write medium it might write okay this pen might even write invisible you can write many words let's see what I can do with this convertible galaxy centennial 100 from Jinhao so this is my fourth Jinhao 100 Centennial. I'll link my previous reviews of this model in the description so you can watch those if you wish. I'll skip the detailed description of the parts and features of this pen and look at some of the ways this model can be a lot of fun. Then I'll show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. First, let's compare this Jinhao 100 Centennial with a real 1988 Parker Duofold Centennial. Fortunately, I still have Teresa's Centennial, which was featured in yesterday's video. And we'll see here why I believe the Jinhao is an homage to the Centennial rather than a direct copy. First, it's clearly branded Jinhao all over the pen. Second, Jinhao has used the ball clip uh, from the original 1920 Duo Fold rather than the Centennial Parker arrow clip, as others have done. Next, the wide gold metal cap band isn't like either the original Duo Fold or the Centennial. The faux blind cap is much shorter than the Centennial, and the Centennial has two gold rings separated the end finial and the barrel, where the Jinhao only has one. The sections are identical in size and shape, but Jinhao has one ring towards the steel nib instead of two. And of course, the Centennial has an 18 karat gold Parker Arrow nib. There's no mistaking the difference between those two nibs. So Jinhao has made some conscious decisions to make this Model 100 a blend of new and old Parkers. Now let's look at a Moonman M600S and the Kaigalu 316 next to the real thing. The Moonman changes the size of the cap bands, but has a very similar Parker arrow clip. And it has the same section as the Jinhao with the one ring. The Kaigalu 316 uses a single cap band with a filigree pattern on it and a completely different and unique clip. But the Chinese aren't the only ones to copy this pen style. Here is my Conklin Durograph. The top finial isn't as thick as the Parker and it uses a teardrop style uh, clip. But there's no doubt about which pen this Durograph is channeling here. But I guess you could argue that the Conklin is Chinese too, since it's made in China. I don't believe that the Jinhao Centennial is stealing any business away from Parker. If you can afford a new Parker Centennial for a thousand bucks, then you'll be poo-pooing all these other brands anyway. For the rest of us, this is a collectible, affordable, usable fountain pen with a growing number of finish options. Let's look at this pen in comparison with my others. Here is the first one I had in bright orange, and then there was the two in blue cracked ice, one with black finials and section, and one with a matching section and finials. And there are some good reasons why this is one of the best Chinese fountain pens on the market. It's very affordable, well-built, and comes with a passable number six size steel nib that can be easily swapped with other number six size steel nibs. Bach, Yovo, Kaigalu, Generic, what have you. And this is a bit of a Franken pen as well. I can mix and match these parts with each other. Now I'm a sucker for this galaxy finish, but I'm not really sold on the ivory section and finials. Ideally, I'd like to have it in galaxy with black section and finials. Well, watch this. But I want to match the gold on the section as well. And my black section has chrome on it and a chrome nib. But my first Jinhao 100 has a black section with gold trim. And I replaced the nib with an italics broad cursive italic. And so let's swap that out. Et voila. The only thing that is a little mismatched now is the top medallion on the finial, but the orange version had a bronzy kind of 
medallion on the top as well. So it's not so bad. So let's return this pen to stock again. There we go, back the way it was. Fast and easy. So the pen comes with a converter. And let's take a closer look at this nib. This one looks like the old stock Jinhao nibs with the old 18K GP marking on it, which is supposed to mean 18 karat gold plated. Yeah, right. They've since replaced that with this newer Jinhao nib that has the grade marking on it. Here it's an F for fine. The one in this Galaxy looks to have a generous amount of tipping on it so it looks like a medium in fact that's how it was advertised when i purchased it in addition to all the finishes jinhao is adding to this model they're also offering medium and bent nib options as well the nib and feet are part of a nib collar assembly that comes out easily for swapping or maintenance and has that jinhao logo on the collar you can also pull this nib out of here and push in a number six fairly easily as I did with this italics. The inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into that acrylic that meets up with the top of the section to seal the nib. And another nice feature, the end of the section here has a little silicone o-ring that helps keep that barrel from unscrewing as you write. The cap posts, not very deeply, but securely but the pen isn't designed to write like this. It's much too long. Unposted, it's very nicely balanced in the hand and very similar in feel to the original Jinhao Centennial. The Centennial might be just slightly heavier than the Jinhao. I bought this pen on AliExpress for $26.52 Canadian, including shipping. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Jinhao 100 Centennial Galaxy with a genuine 1988 Parker Dual Fold Centennial, a Moonman 600S, a Kaigaloo 316, and a Wingsung 670. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that none of these pens post very well. I mean, they post securely, but way too long to write with. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Jinhao 100 Centennial. And it has a medium steel nib. And let's check the wetness. Well, it's not all that wet, but uh, this is a fairly dry ink, and the ink is KWZ Sheen Machine. And here are some close matches to this ink from Inkswatch.com. You might already be able to see some of that very, very reddish, pinkish sheen. This is indeed a sheen machine. And this nib is very smooth. It's actually, because I was already planning to swap this nib out, because I generally don't like Jinhao nibs. They're kind of just ordinary. But this one is actually not too bad. That's the line variation. Well, you can push a little bit out of it. But it's very stiff, as usual with Chinese steel pens. And the line it makes 
is a 0 0.5 millimeter line which makes it a western fine or a Japanese fine to medium and I'm actually quite liking this nib I'll have to mark this one among all my many Jinhao generic kind of nibs as one of the better ones in the collection and for our quote And for some reverse writing, it's actually not too bad at all. It skips a bit, so no flow. And for some quick writing, actually doesn't have any flow issues whatsoever very nice so I'm really actually very surprised with how nice that nib is on this one because they're all as I said fairly kind of boring ho-hum nibs and I generally end up replacing them uh, but this one's very nice but I was planning on replacing it so I want to do a swap I want to swap out the black finials and I'm going to swap in the italics um, broad cursive italic nib uh, and section into this pen and then we're going to write again there we go so let's do another writing sample okay and now this is the Jinhao 100 Centennial Galaxy Rankin Pen because now it has a broad cursive italic nib from italics and it has black finials and a black section and the ink now is diamine jack frost and this is really ultra smooth just like butter on glass so this ink has a bit of a silver shimmer to it and a very pronounced uh, red pinkish sheen to it and it shades from deep purple to azure blue it's a fascinating ink Jack Frost and of course line variation of the yin yang with this broad cursive italic and let's do another quote So what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, I've just demonstrated what I love about this pen and this model of pen. I've said before that this is the best Chinese fountain pen on the market from the last year, because I think it was introduced in late 2020. I might, might be in a little bit earlier than that, but I, in my best pens of 2021, I said it was one of the best pens out there. And not just because of the price because they are reasonable but because they've got so many different finishes they're competing with uh, pen bbs for the amount of finishes that they're putting on this model so obviously it's popular and they're creating more and more all the time and they're mixing and matching finials and, se and sections and things like that so you get a lot of variety hardware trim silver gold that kind of thing 
Uh, there's even a, a solid black and gold one, which is very, very nice. But the thing that I really love about them is because it's that number six size Jin Hao nib that you can pull out of there so easily. You can put any kind of nib you can think of, uh, as long as it's standard number six. If you like Yovo, if you like Bach, if you like Schmidt, whatever it might be, they generally will fit. And then I can mix and match uh, my barrels, my caps, my finials, my sections, and you can make a creation of your own uh, out of two or three pens and at 18 to 20 bucks each it's not a lot of money so it's a lot of fun i've now got a galaxy pen in this model which will rival the galaxy in my moon man galaxy m800 the galaxy color in my leonardo ferrore and the galaxy color in my pen bbs 456 one of my favorite pens so I'm very pleased with this pen and I'm glad the way it went back together again in the shape and form that I like it and it has a really cool cursive italic nib on it with a very very cool color so this is a pen I'm gonna write with I'm sure so there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please check in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate member of that online store. And if you use that link uh, to make your purchase, you'll be supporting my channel at no extra cost to you. And you can join as a member of my channel as well for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you get cool emojis, badges, and sneak preview unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.